so today I'm going to go over what's in my electronics area. Lots of stuff here. I'm Lynn and this is the Darwin Orbit Channel. So quite frequently people ask me about my electronics area and uh, I often integrate electronics, especially lighting and some audio into my projects and there seems to be quite a lot of interest, a lot of people coming from the beginner point of view and looking to get into that as well. So yeah, let's go over what's here. Now I think electronics are great because they're fun. The parts are mostly quite small, they don't take a lot of space, and many of the things are quite inexpensive as well, so it's kind of fun to collect over time. So let's start from the very beginning, shall we? First of all, I have a desk. I built this desk a while ago now. It has drawers on both sides, so it has a lot of storage. If you're getting into this and if you have the space, I highly recommend having a dedicated area. I think it's really nice to have a space where, you know, I don't do woodworking, I don't do those kinds of things. This is just for electronics and design work and, you know, things like that. Um, so that's really nice. Now on top of the desk I built this organizing system. This is like a caddy system. And one thing, once you get into this, you start kind of uh, collecting um, lots and lots of things over time and it's nice to have somewhere to store them. So um, a lot of these things don't take up a lot of space, um, but they tend to go everywhere. So having a caddy system of some type is really nice. Now, I also like how this has a top shelf. So let's move on to the top shelf, shall we? I guess the soldering iron is one of the uh, products that I use the most. Uh, now, this is a pretty nice one. Um, I have used a couple of them. I've kind of worked my way up to this one. My first ones were not so great, but it doesn't really matter. You can really use any soldering iron. This one is nice because it's kind of hefty. It gets hot really quickly, which is really nice. Moving on, let's see, I have my fume extractor, which I made. So this actually has a couple of computer fans in here. And this obviously isn't necessary. Um, you can open a window, <laughs> but it is very nice if you do solder, especially for a longer period of time. It's nice to have a fan somewhere to extract the fumes. This is another project, which I really enjoyed. I use it all the time. It has a light on it. It's not plugged in right now, um, but it has these various arms, third, uh, third hands on here, so you can hold the work when you solder. Then we have the variable power supply. This is really nice when working on different projects. You can set either the voltage or the current. This is not the greatest one, but it's pretty nice. Some of these, like in all things, things can get really expensive. Um, but this one definitely does the job quite, quite well, and I use this one all the time. Uh, let's see, over down here I have my power supply, which is kind of more like a power strip, really. I have it set to 5 and 12 volts, and this is really kind of to eliminate wires, to not fill up the strip on the wall too much, and I can plug in whatever, especially the things that I built in here. So that is really nice. Let's see a couple of the other tools that I use. Let me get those out. So we have the multimeter. This is basically a portable voltage and current tester. You can also test continuity uh, with this. This is a wire stripper. Also one of those things that you use all the time. The hot glue gun is one of those things which is really nice to secure electronics to um, your boxes or whatever, to keep it in place. That's pretty much it in terms of tools. Let's move on to supplies. Okay, so in terms of supplies, I guess one of the most important thing is wire. And it's nice to have uh, three different colors for positive and negative and ground. Now, I have both 20 and 22 gauge, so thick and slightly thinner wire. And I also have both a solid and stranded. So here, for example, you have solid and this is stranded. So you can definitely tell the difference. So that's just for different applications. Um, another thing is solder. So I have thicker solder and thinner solder. Now they're both pretty thin. You don't want to use the kind that you use like for plumbing or anything like that. That's way too thick. You need to go with the thinner stuff for that. Now I have a variety of different products on hand. I like to have 
Um, buy a kit with lots of different sizes, like for example here I have a bunch of capacitors, resistors, different potentiometers, heat shrink tube wrap in different sizes is really useful. Barrel plugs, male and female, something I use all the time for different things when you want to add a you know, a power supply. Uh, oh, different switches. I like having a variety of different switches around because you don't know what you're going to need for what project. Um, of course, we have the Arduino. And actually, if you want to get into electronics, I think get the Arduino kit because that has a variety of, of different things and it's really kind of fun to uh, play around with that. Breadboards, PCB boards in different sizes also have a variety of leds i have like led strips and in different colors and in different sizes just a variety of them i also have these single leds they actually come in different colors when you power them up now one pretty frequently asked question that i get is how do i calculate which resistor i need for my project so i thought we would do uh, a quick little thing on that so let's say we have 19 volts coming in and we want to power up one of these lights. So I know that one of these lights use about 2.2 volts. And this you can often read on the package. Um, so we need to find the difference. So that is 16.8. Okay, let's see, I can see that there. Okay, now we need to divide the difference here with how much current one of these uh, lights draws. Now I know uh, from measuring this on my variable power supply that one of these lights uh, use about 10 milliamps. So I'm going to divide that by 0 0.01. Okay, so that's 1680 ohms. However, when you're dealing with this, you don't have to be exact. So I'm gonna look for a, a resistor that is like 1.8K around there. So that is how you calculate what resistor you need for your project. So another addition to the shop is this little 3D printed device. So um, yeah, a little while ago I saw that Graham over at Diode Press made one of these on his 3D printer and I just thought it was so, so neat. So I talked to some friends of mine who run a local 3D printing shop, Phoenix 3D they're called, and we've been kind of talking about something to do together. And so I suggested this. So they talked with Graham and then they printed this for me. I love that it's plastic, so it's not conductive. So this is a really, really cool addition here, I think. So this is not a complete list of what you need to get into electronics by any means. This is just what I have been collecting and using for my projects. Also, I don't look at my channel as an instructional electronics channel. I just kind of like to add some stuff to some of my projects to enhance them. But if you're looking to dwell deeper into this, then you, there are definitely a couple of good channels that you can check out. Um, for example, Kirby Meets Audio is a very good audio speakers channel. He builds a lot of really cool speakers. And also Great Scott does a lot of very interesting electronics focus projects. So he's another good one to check out. Also, I want to really thank my patrons over at patreon.com. And actually a lot of the electronics related supplies is what I have gotten with the funds from Patreon. So that has been really cool. If you're interested in becoming a patron, then I'll leave a link in the description below. You can check that out. Um, but yeah, otherwise, thank you guys so much and I'll see you soon.